It is good to be in God's house Amen. tonight. Thank you for coming and being here. And I'm going to look uh, in Romans chapter 13. I think I'll go down to verse 11. I think I'll just shorten it down to uh, four verses tonight and uh, read that. I want you to notice in Romans 13 verse 11, it, it says, And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as the day not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. I want to draw your attention to something that, that Paul said in verse 11 as God speaks through him and he writes this term in verse 11, right there at the very beginning. He said, and that knowing the time, knowing the time. And I want to talk about that. In fact, that's where I draw my title, uh, knowing the time. If there's something that you and I need to know, we need to know what time it is. And I'm not talking about the, the chronological order of, of the hands of a clock. Not talking about the time that you and I are usually concerned about. Time on a wristwatch or time on a pocket watch, time on a on a, a, the, a clock on the wall or whatever. But I'm concerned about what Paul is talking about. Do we really know the time that's that's going on in the world today? Not the time of a watch, but the time of God. That that God God is has got a timetable, and everything is on his timetable, and it's going to work God's way. It's coming to a point that God knows the exact time that, that you and I are going to leave this world. He knows the exact time that this that the life that we're now living is going to change. Uh, it's what we, we look at time in a sense of, of well, what time is it that I need to get up and go do something? What time is it that I need to be somewhere? I, I like time pieces. I just don't keep them. Everybody has gotten to the point now where they just look at their phones to find out what time it is. Uh, but years ago, uh, people, my dad always wore a wrist, wristwatch. And I was all, I, you know, I, I noticed that that most of the people that wore wristwatches, most of the men that wore wristwatches, the wristwatch that they wore, the watch was on the outside of the arm. They always looked at their arm this way, like that. I noticed that my dad wore his face on the inside of his, on his wrist. And it was always, he always looked on the inside there. And I asked him one day, why Why does everybody wear their watch on the outside, but you wear your watch on the inside? And he said, well, that's the way that they had to do it during World War II. They wore the watches on the inside so that the Germans, if the Germans would never be able to see a reflection of the glass if you were moving or walking or anything else, that they would not see it. They wore it on the inside so that it would be protected. And so he, and he still wore it up until the day that he finally died. Uh, he still wore his watch that way. Uh, but you know what? God is, God is not worried about our wristwatches. God is not concerned about what time it is that we go to bed or get up. But God's timetable is different. Paul is talking about this. Knowing the time. Amen. We need to know what time it is. That it is high time to awake, he says, out of the sleep. You know, one of the things that, that time tells us is that, that you and I, we're used to the time. You know, just a few months ago, we came to, we came to church, and when we started church, it was light outside. It was daylight. And in fact, when we got out of 
of church, it was daylight. And it was it, it was a different time. But now we start church, it's dark. And, and, so, and so the time has changed. I need to know what time it is to be here. I also have learned through the hard way that my daughter lives in another time zone. And so for me to text her when it's 6.30 in the morning here, I learned a long time ago when she lived in Arizona, it's not 6.30 out there when I text her. And so she texted me one day and she said, Dad, do you realize it's 4 o'clock in the morning out here? Don't text me at 4 o'clock in the morning. Text me, you know, when it, when later on, when it's 9 o'clock, then you text me and I'll get it. But you know what? We, we're so used to timetables and times and, and approaching. But God says we need to know the time. But it's not that kind of time that God wants us to, to truly understand. It's important that we know what God has in store for us. Amen. Things are going to happen. Things are happening. We need to look around. And that's what he's trying to say. Look around in the world today and you'll see that there is a time that's happening. We're in a time right now, a time that years ago people did not even understand how close we are right now to the coming of the Lord. That's right. Years ago, people, there were, there were people that were here that really never thought about it because there were things that had not happened. There were signs that had not been completed. There were things that God talked about that in the end times, the nation of Israel is going to come back together. There were things that were going to happen. People were going to change. There were countries that were going to be involved. And years ago, those things had not happened. That's right. Israel had no homeland until 1948, and they came back together. There's things that are taking place now that the world never dreamed they would see. The cornerstone is ready for the temple. Amen. It's already been cut. Amen. It's sitting in Israel. The garbs that are going to be worn by the high priests, the, the robes, the jewels, everything are already complete. Right. They're, they're already on display in Jerusalem. They weren't done years ago, but today they are. Amen. There's things that are happening that we need to look around and understand that the time has changed. And we are growing closer and closer and closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to pay attention to that. Amen. And so many people don't. God reminds us here in verse 11 that we need to know the time. And I want to talk about that just for a minute. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to is what kind of time is God talking about? He says right here, knowing the time. And then notice the next thing that he says, that now it is high time to awake. I would say, first of all, that we need to understand it is time to wake. It is time to wake. He says, he says here that we need to wake up. It is time to awake out of sleep. Is he talking about a sleep that you and I have been asleep in the bed? No, he's talking about something that's different than waking up this morning. All of us woke up this morning. We, we're all right here, so we woke up at some time. Maybe you woke up afternoon. Maybe you didn't get up this morning. Maybe you slept past noon. There are people that do that. They stay in the bed. They sleep late. They they don't get up and they don't start their day till afternoon and then and they go on and on and on. That's not me. I'm, I'm an early riser. I like that. But we need to wake up out of sleep, he says. But it's not the sleep that you went to bed talking about sleep. We're not to wake up from a nap. That's not what he's talking about here. He's not even talking about waking up. You know, sometimes... People, we talk to somebody and say, well, wake up. You know, you need to wake up. You need to get, and they're not talking about that you had gone to sleep. It's just that you were, you were confused. You were not thinking about it. You were unconcerned. And so they use that term, you need to wake up. Amen. Because look around. 
you need to realize that things are happening. So, but God is talking about something totally different here. God is saying that we need to wake up to the fact that spiritually things are taking place that we need to be concerned about. Amen. We need to look around spiritually, not physically, not wake up from a bed, from a sleep, from a nap, or even being confused about things out there. But we need to wake up spiritually because there are things taking place that we really need to be concerned about and look them, look around and see that there are things happening. Problem is that most Christians, most Christians, I think, across the board, are not concerned about what's happening in the world. They just are here. They just exist. They know they're saved. They know they're going to heaven, but they are not concerned about the signs. They're not concerned about the things. They're not concerned about all the happenings in the world. But we need to look around. God, God tells us to pay attention to it and see it and be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. We truly need to understand that the rapture is going to take place, that the trumpet is going to sound, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and in verse 51 and 52, tells us that the trumpet is going to sound, and the Lord is going to appear up in the clouds, and we're going to leave here, and we're going to go up and be with him. Why do we need to know that? Why do we need to be concerned about that? Because we need to make sure that we are walking the way that God would have us to walk. We need to know that we are ready. And we need to be concerned about loved ones. We need to be concerned about family. We need to be concerned about people that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because time is growing short. We tend to think that there's plenty of time. And I hope they will learn. I hope they get saved. I hope they come to the realization that, that there is a real heaven and a real hell. But if we're not able to witness to them, then who's going to tell them the truth? Who's going to be able to share with them the, that, that it really is going to happen? The coming of the Lord is going to take place, and we need to look around. That's why he's, he's saying that. Paul is saying it is high time to awake. Amen. We need to wake up is what he's saying. Time to wake Time to be concerned. Time to try to share the gospel with loved ones and family members. Time to, to be able to, to live our life the way that we should live that life. Uh, it, the rapture is going to take place. And, and as we look at scriptures, we begin to realize that, you know what, it's it's closer than it ever has been before. Now, right. we say that, and sometimes, you know, we, 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 we tend to think, well, you know, people have said that for a thousand years. People have looked around. Paul thought Jesus was coming back. Peter was looking for the return. James was looking for the return. Uh, every generation, all the way through, they were all looking for the return. But what they didn't have, were the things that have happened that we have seen, Amen. the things that have been completed, the things that have taken place that tells us, you know what, they were looking for it, but they didn't have the understanding that we have. Amen. We have an understanding today that's totally different, and that is that we have seen the completion of things that have taken place. We have seen the coming back of a nation. We have seen the things that, that, that leads us to understand that it is going to happen soon. Now, what is soon? I have no clue. You know, that's no, no man knows the hour Amen. God says, and we have no clue of when it's going to happen. But the one thing we do know is that we have seen so many things that tell us it's getting closer and closer closer than what we realize. And so that's what he's saying. Wake up. It's time to awake. Time to look around. Time to come out of our sleep. We, it's, 
We can't afford to just sit around and doze off spiritually. We need to truly try to share with people that if the thing is true, it's, it's going to happen. He says, it's time to wake, awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer. Did you notice he says our salvation is nearer than when we believe? Amen. You know, when, when Paul wrote that, I don't, I'm not sure that Paul truly understood what that would mean to, to our generation today. Amen. That the salvation is nearer. He's not talking about the fact that your salvation, meaning the time that you gave your life to Jesus Christ, is nearer. No, we're already saved. Paul was already saved. Those that followed him that, that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, they were already saved. That salvation is nearer is not your eternal salvation. That salvation is the trumpet sounding. That salvation is when the Lord is going to call us up into the clouds. Amen. That's what he's saying. It's nearer than when we believe. Amen. It, when we believed, that's when you got saved. But what's nearer is the coming of the Lord. What's nearer is the trumpet that's going to sound. What's nearer is that we have gone closer and closer and closer, and now everything has been completed. Every sign has been has been completed, right. and there is nothing left. We have nothing that's holding back except for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is holding back God from sending his Son down into the clouds. It's the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit finally says enough is enough, he Amen. will move out of the way, and that trumpet will sound. And how long that will be and how long the Holy Spirit is able to hold back God from sending his son, no man knows that hour. Amen. But it's coming one day. Our salvation is nearer and nearer as the days go by. And as we look at events in history, as we look at things that are happening in government, as we look at things that are happening around this world, it draws our attention to the fact that it's nearer than, than when we believed. Amen. It is closer than we ever have seen. Something else I want to sh share with you. First of all, it was time to wake. And the second one, it's time to walk. I want you to notice in verse 13, he said, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting, and in drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. He says it's time to walk. Time to walk how? Honestly. Our walk is our conduct. That's what he's referring Amen. to there. It is let us walk. That is, let your lifestyle be seen. Your walk honestly. That is that, that when people look at you, they see the Lord Jesus Christ in you. They see your, your lifestyle, your walk. Uh, every day uh, means your behavior. How are you seen? Uh, are you seen as a Christian when people see you outside, when they see you in the street, when they see you downtown, when they see you at the grocery store? Are we walking the way that God would have us to walk? That's what he's saying here. Let us walk honestly. And that word honestly uh, simply means properly. Let us behave properly. Uh, and then he says, he says this, as in the day, as in the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day. That's opposite of walking in the night. Walking in the day is that that we are the light of the world, that people can see the Lord Jesus Christ in us. That's what in the day meant. We are light. People see us and they know that we're saved. They know that we're different. They know that, that they, can, they see Jesus Christ in us. The opposite of that, of course, is walking in the night. And that's what God says that we're not to be. We're not to be in darkness Darkness is evil. Darkness is the bad. There was a football coach that had a 
had a slogan years ago. He was a professional football coach, and he coached the, the Baltimore Colts back in those days. And, and he had a slogan on his wall that said, nothing good happens after midnight. That's right. And that's what, that's what every one of his players he told. He said, and, and he always brought up, he said, every kid that he had to go get out of jail, every one of them, it happened after midnight. Right. It was always 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning when they got in trouble. And so it, it, when you're out in the darkness, when your life is out there in the world, that's when you're going to get in trouble. It, the, to walk in the light means that we can be seen, we're not hiding. We're walking as God would have us to walk. Amen. And so he says, he said, let your, let your walk be in the light, in the day, not in the night. You notice he says that we're not to, we're not to live in rioting living. That is, rioting, riotous living is, is carousing around at night, but not in drunkenness. Everybody knows what he's talking about there. That should not be done. People should not uh, partake of that of alcohol that's going to, to bring them to that drunken state. He, he mentions chambering there, not in chambering. That word chambering means jumping from bedroom to bedroom. And that's what he's talking about there. Wantonness. Wantonness is, is, a, is a picture of standing outside in the dark, uh, wanting to to get involved in something, wanting to, uh, to, to run around and, and, to, and to chasing after things. That, that's what wantonness means. Strife, of course, is strife is that, is that, uh, that life that, that you're out there always fighting and arguing. Envying is, is desiring to have things that other people have and being jealous over somebody else that has something. He says that's not your lifestyle if you're a child of God. It's time to walk the way that God wants you to walk, not in the way of the world, Amen. not in riotous, not in drunkenness, not in chambering, not in, in wantonness uh, or, or, or strife or envy. He says walk the way that God would have you to walk. Walk in the light. Let people see you the way that God would want us to go. And then and then he, not only are we to, uh, it's time to wake, it's time to walk, but he says something else here. It's time to wear. Time to wear. You know what? What you wear identifies you sometimes. You notice in verse 12 what he said? In verse 12 he said, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off, cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. So you see a picture there of undressing and dressing, casting off darkness, putting on the armor of light. And then you notice he says in verse 14, here's something else we put on. Put, he said, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what we wear sometimes identifies us. I remember years ago, I, there was a there was a girl in the church, a young lady, and, and we would she would always be in church. She and her family they were always here, and and they were that they were faithful and everything else, and and she always saw me every Sunday morning in my suit. Well, I tell you, you know, I always wore a suit when I preach on Sunday, and I'd have to have my coat and tie on, and I'd be all dressed up. And we would always talk, and I would shake her hand as they would go out and, and, uh, and say goodbye. That's all she ever saw. One day, while I was in Lowe's, she was standing there looking at some spray paint. And I was standing there looking at some spray paint. And I had blue jeans on, an old T-shirt that had paint on it, my old tennis shoes. And I'm standing there getting some paint. And I look over, and I see who it is. She's every Sunday, she's right there. And so I speak to her, and she looks over, and she says, oh, hey, hey, how you doing? 
I, I can tell she has no clue why I'm <laughs> angry. And she got the paint and she left. And I can tell I made her very uncomfortable standing there because I knew her name. And she, and then it was a few minutes later, all of a sudden, I heard this, Brother Larry. <laughs> and I turned and looked, and it was her. She said, I thought I recognized the voice, but I couldn't put it together. She said, I've never seen you in clothes. <laughs> and and I, I said, well, I wear clothes every time you see me. She said, no, I meant, I meant those kind of clothes. So you know what? Our, the, what we wear sometimes identifies yeah. us. You know, when I come to church on Sunday, I look differently maybe. I have. I have that Sunday clothes on. On Wednesday nights, I dress down a little bit, but I always feel like if I'm up here in the podium, I need I need a sports coat on. I always try to try to dress a little bit differently. It's 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 what you wear. God is saying right here that that we need to be identified by what we wear. But it's, he's not talking about our coats and ties or dresses or anything else. He's talking about the fact that we should take off that old life that we used to live, that old thing that yeah. used to define us, the darkness that we walked in at some point in time. Maybe you got saved very early and you didn't wear that darkness much, but there was a time in which you still did not know Jesus Christ. Maybe you learned Christ very easily, but you know what? Very easily, even as a Christian, sometimes we can put on some dark clothes. Amen. We can kind of, it can it can kind of come on us before we know it. We need to put on that armor of light. He says we need to walk with the breastplate of righteousness when they see us. We need to wear the helmet of salvation. Yeah, we may not always be like that, but you know what? That's the way we ought to be. Yeah. That's the way that, that people ought to see us out there in the world, that we are not wearing. Put off the old things, he says. Put on the, he said, he said cast off the works of darkness. Don't wear them. And all of us sometimes may feel that darkness coming on us, but we need to do all we can to cast it off Amen. and to wear the things of God, to right. wear the things that we should wear. And so it's time to wear. It's time to wear what God would have us to wear. And I'm not talking about the, the physical things. I'm talking about the spiritual things. But then they, there's things that, you know, when we, we gather together as God's children and things like that, you know what? We come together and we are we are God's people. It's easy to put on God when we walk into a church. Amen. But it's it's out there, it's out there in the world. What kind of testimony would I have had if if I had been at Lowe's when I met that young girl and I got mad at something? I got mad at the cashier. I got upset at something. What kind of testimony would it have been if she had seen me showing out that that life that uh, that I should and getting mad at something? There's, you know what? You never know when somebody looks. That's right. You never know what effect you may have on somebody. Therefore, we need to be. We need to be that that child of God. People can get us upset very easily out there in the world. Amen. They can get us upset very easily on the road driving, going places, walking into a store, whatever it is, people can get us upset. But we have to cast off what we don't need to be and put on what we need to be. Amen. Wear, that's what he's talking about. Wear, it is time to wear, he says right there, uh, the things of God wherever we go, whatever we do. Let's have us a word of prayer as we get ready to head out and do the